We're gonna finish what we started. The Devil Comes at Night, and this is directed by Scott Lever, who also co-wrote the movie and has a small role in the film as well. Now, it stars Ryan Allen as a character called Ben, who also co-wrote the movie, and is a low-budget kind of supernatural home invasion slash siege movie with kind of cult elements in there as well. What is the story? Well, it focuses on the character of Ben, who is an ex-boxer who returns to his estranged father's home to try and find a safe. And when he is there, um, you know, his father has passed away, but when he's there, he sees that there is a woman in this house who apparently is a friend of the, of the, uh, the, the passed away father. But more pressingly, there seems to be weird people kind of outside. And, you know, there's the overly kind of friendly neighbours, there's this kind of uh, um, somewhat kind of aggressive guy called Mason. And what happens later on is we have these cultists appear who, for some reason, and that, that will be explained in the film, can't enter the house, but seemingly want to uh, get Ben and, um, and this woman ultimately uh, for nefarious purposes. And they kind of mention they want to eat flesh. What's that all about? Um, so, what will happen? What will, will uh, these characters do? You'll have to watch the movie and find out. So let's discuss what I think works in this movie. So it's a low budget movie, and one thing I would say is when you are working on a film with a low budget, you know, I think it's better to try and write um, your way around situations that may require you know, vast spectacle, visual effects and things like that. And if you can't do it, you're better off having a movie which doesn't really involve that. So this movie is like that. It's a character-based film that is essentially a kind of home invasion slash kind of siege movie that has a lot of focus on character and kind of like moments of um, kind of... Um, well, character moments, I would say, involve like racism, for example, estranged family members, um, you know, the, the meaning of friendship, things like this. Um, some sports kind of, because uh, this guy's an ex-boxer. Um, some conversations about sport, things like this. There is some meat on the bones here for our characters to have conversation about. And we kind of get a good sense of these kind of like characters, what they're all about, what makes them tick, and, and then they kind of their, their motivations and stuff. And although it doesn't kind of like hammer you over their head here with messaging, I will say that, you know, it incorporates elements of things like racism that's clearly come from, you know, uh, movies like Get Out, which kind of, you know, was a, was a big movie that kind of uh, had that as part of its kind of story. But again, like I said, it's, it's, it's a relatively minor part, to be fair, but it's, it is in there, and I do think it kind of fits well with the kind of the idea of the kind of the story here. Um, so that was all pretty good. There's actually a fairly good reveal in this movie, I think it was quite clever. I didn't see coming, which is always good. And, um, you know, there, there are some... The, the cultists, I have to say, are portrayed, for the most part, in, in a creepy fashion. And wisely, as I say, the filmmaker doesn't try to uh, overextend themselves in regards to v, VFX, stuff that they would look crap on screen. It's only because it's a suggestion about what might happen and things like this. Um, which I think is probably the way to go. I mean, visually speaking, ultimately it's not massively kind of, uh, has much spectacle or anything, but I think probably better off doing it this way rather than trying to do things that would end up looking kind of crap. The acting, I think, for the most part, with an exception or so I'll talk about in a minute, I think was fine. I don't think it's outstanding anyway, but I think it was good enough for this movie. I don't think you, there's no clunkers here. There's no one's going to be distracting in regards to their performance. They all seem kind of perfectly reasonable in regard to their performance. And the story is a simple one uh, when it comes down to it. Uh, outside of a couple of, uh, as I say, uh, exceptions, like the twist. And then we have a kind of a bit of a clunky intro, which I'll come on to. But the, relatively speaking, the story is kind of simple, easy to kind of follow. Uh, but has some interesting kind of ideas here. Um, yeah, and I quite like the idea of these kind of cultists and what they're actually after. I think they do seem very sinister. And, um, 
you know, I, I sort of quite like the uh, the idea what they would look. Even the visual representation of them in there. You know, sack-like masks and stuff. And there's a couple of bits of violence here, which I thought was quite done quite well as well. What doesn't work for me, the I think the first 10 to 15 minutes of this movie is a little rough. The setup isn't particularly strong. Now, I think there's maybe two reasons for that. The first is just it wasn't done particularly well. Simple as that. There could have been choices here to make it better. I also have to say, the second point, I think here, part of the reason for it is the filmmakers what I wanted to have reveals about character motivations and and things like that later on in the movie. So it's, it starts off with you feel like you, you're missing information and you're, you're not quite connecting with Ben as a character because um, they want to kind of keep stuff for a little bit later on. But I have to say I do think this could have been uh, played better. There is talk of an altercation that had happened earlier on, in the, you know, but we don't see. And I, I don't know, part of me thinks you, they could have shown that to kind of introduce these kind of characters or, or simply done a little bit more set up with these kind of characters. So once we get into that past that 10, 15 minute mark, I think the, the, uh, the story is quite simple and easy to follow. If you are expecting a movie with kind of visual spectacle, you simply won't get it here. Yes, there are supernatural elements at play. Yes, this movie does con con turn uh, cultists to our, you know, in league with the evil or the devil or what have you, but you don't really see anything over on screen here. It's all just suggested and kind of really spoken about. So again, this is a, a, a down to simply, I would imagine the budget, um, you get a very mild bit of kind of visual representation of that, but it really is uh, not all that kind of, not all that when it comes down to it. So the story as I mentioned is quite, is quite basic. There are a few kind of like, minor sort of twists and turns, but ultimately I think if you want a, a deeper story, you might want to look elsewhere. It is a kind of a, that's both, like, both a positive and a negative, because you just want an easy to follow story, then, then knock yourself out. But if you want one which has many kind of twists and turns and reveals and things like that, you know, it's, it's on the kind of the lighter side in regards to that. I have to say, I do think there are some, a, a little bit of overacting from some of the cast here. Uh, some of the cultists will act in different ways. I mean, we get a, a few kind of like uh, different people turn up through the movie and like the neighbours and stuff. And I didn't think they were particularly kind of strong uh, things like this. And there's a, there's, a, there's a whole thing here where you're not quite sure if people are being genuine or they're putting on a front trying to get you to do something. And I feel here those type of performances weren't strong. There are a couple of logic issues I had of this movie as, as well. Again, I don't want to go into too much in regards to spoilers, but you know, Ultimately, for reasons that will become revealed, these um, cultists can't come in the house and they want to flush out the two people that are in the house. But no one's thinking about using guns or or, or, or kind of like, or trying them. I mean, they, they have a threat of fire, but don't use it. There is a kind of a reason why they sort of don't use the fire in story. But I think, to be honest with you, if you set fire to a house, most people are going to come out. Um, you know, so I don't know if that really kind of works. I think people would rather they take their chances on the outside, rather than guaranteed they're going to burn to death. So I have to say, I think there are a few kind of plot holes and stuff, which I don't think uh, were particularly well thought through or could have been addressed. And when it's such a simple story, I feel you need to kind of make sure you plug all these kind of little uh, plot holes. The ending, I kind of like the reveal, but I can understand maybe why people might be uh, a little unsatisfied with it. So when it comes down to it, it was a fairly well put together kind of low budget kind of thriller. I don't think it's anything outstanding. I don't think it really kind of will leave much of a mark in regards to being a memorable film that you kind of rewatch. But I think it was, it's, it's like fine for a one time watch, I would say. I'll give it a five out of 10, which is an average score here. Uh, please do let me know what you think about it if you've seen it and I'll look forward to seeing you next time.